The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, the expert body on coronavirus, has released guidance for general public and healthcare professionals on the symptoms of the virus. A person could be at risk if they have any or all of the following. Fever and symptoms of lower respiratory illness, such as coughing or difficulty breathing after traveling to areas with positive cases, or having close contact with someone who is ill and is now under investigation for the virus in the past two weeks. Fever or symptoms of lower respiratory illness after having close contact in the past two weeks with someone who has been confirmed to have the virus. The CDC defines close contact as being within about 6 feet 1.8 meters or within the room or care area of a person with the coronavirus for a prolonged period without appropriate protective clothing or having direct contact with the infectious secretions of a person with the virus without protective clothing. Coronaviruses are particularly dangerous for people who have weaker immune systems like young children and older adults. To protect yourself from the virus, try to avoid contact with people who display symptoms similar to those of pneumonia or the common cold like coughing or a runny nose. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth with unwashed hands. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water and scrub for at least 20 seconds. Use alcohol-based hand sanitizer when possible. Be careful when handling pets. The only current treatment for coronavirus being offered is supportive in nature. If you notice any of these symptoms and conditions, please contact your nearest professional health care setup. Help spread this information to everyone. Fear of the coronavirus along with misinformation about its spread, could lead to stigma and discrimination towards people contracting the disease, their families, and even healthcare workers. Stigmatized people may be subjected to social avoidance, bullying, and acts of aggression and physical violence, which could have a detrimental effect on their mental health. To help reduce stigma and its impact, you can share accurate information about the virus and how it spread. Speak out against negative statements shared on social media sites and don't share such videos. Don't refer to coronavirus victims or cases. They are people with COVID-19. Do understand that stigma and discrimination make it harder for people to seek care for the disease. Do your part to reduce fear and discrimination. Be with responsible with what you share. This message comes to you from the St. Kitts Mental Health Association. To avoid getting the Good afternoon and welcome to the National Emergency Operations Center COVID-19 Daily Briefing for the 26th of April 2020. Thank you very much for joining us today for this briefing as we continue to update you, to inform you in terms of what is happening in St. Kitts and Nevis with respect to the management of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is, of course, affecting all parts of the world, economically, politically, socially, religiously, educationally, it's affecting everything. Today we have a lineup of presenters for you, including Mr. Keatley Phillip, who is the director of the Solid Waste Management Corporation, Dr. Sherilyn Ward Crawford, Mental Health and Psychosocial Support Committee, 
in the Ministry of Health, Superintendent Cromwell Henry, Dr. Marissa Carty, and Mr. Abdias Samuels. I would now like to invite Mr. Keatley Phillip, Director of the Solid Waste Management Corporation, to address us. Mr. Phillip. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Good afternoon, all. Let me express my sincere thanks and commendation to the frontline workers, that is, those persons who have every day toiled hard to ensure that we are kept safe. My thanks and appreciation to you. To Commissioner of Police Brandy, we thank you very much for, for facilitating the necessary permissions so that we could collect the fill that was necessary for us to cover the waste that was disposed at the solid waste landfill. We congratulate our policymakers and the COVID-19 task force in the effective and methodical way in which you have gone about your duties relative to this pandemic. As you are aware, the Solid Waste Management Corporation is responsible for all streams, all waste streams, from its collection, transportation, disposal, and final treatment. As a result of this, the functions that the Solid Waste Management Corporation carries out, that is, our staff members, the collectors, or landfill staff and our drivers, because of the functions that they carry out, they run the very real risk of coming into contact and possibly being contaminated. It was with this in mind that the corporation began the process of sensitizing all staff members as to their expectations while they were on the job. So then, in March, on March the 24th, the general manager met with all individual departments, met with the staff to share their concerns, to get their inputs, and to use the opportunity to bring awareness to the staff regarding measures expected to be adhered to regarding proper sanitization practices. On March 25th, all staff were provided with proper hand sanitization material. On our trucks, we included water stations. So each of our trucks had the necessary water stations by which the staff had the opportunity to wash their hands during the course of their carrying out their duties. At our main office, we installed hand sanitization station along with the necessary um, paper, paper towels, and um, necessary disposal um, bin, if you will, so that persons or uh, customers as they come in, they had the opportunity to sanitize their hands and if necessary, use a paper towel, wipe their hands and place it properly in the bin that was provided. Also on the 25th of, at our landfill, we erected a tent, and under that tent, we provided two water stations or two hand wash stations so that persons who came to the landfill to transact with, um, business had the opportunity to wash their hands if it became necessary. Also, our workers or employees on the landfill had the opportunity to numerous times throughout the day to wash their hands such that they can be kept safe. On March the 27th, we constituted what was to be called the Solid Waste Management Corporation 
COVID-19 response team. It was this team that has been leading the charge as it relates to the Solid Waste Management Corporation. This is a team that has worked tirelessly over the past three weeks to ensure that our staff has all the necessary equipment, has all the necessary sanitization material, and are kept informed as to what time they are required out to work. It is also this team that has put together a, um, a cadre, if you will, of drivers who has had the responsibility of collecting our staff and bringing them to work so that they, they are not kept back. So the Solid Waste Management Corporation has been proactive. Proactive than that while the lockdown, if you will, started around about the end of March, from the, 21st, the 24th of March, we had gone ahead and put proper measures in place so that when the Prime Minister announced that there would be a 24-hour lockdown, the Solid Waste Management Corporation was already ahead of the game in ensuring that the waste, there would, would have been no um, slowdown, there would be no cutting in the collection of the waste. On March 30th, we instituted a temporary collection model whereby instead of waste being collected twice per week for the residents, we cut back to waste being collected once per week. At the same time, we instituted a WhatsApp hotline, the number 662-8572. 662-8572. And this WhatsApp number is a dedicated number so that persons who have difficulties in the collection of their waste could um, send a WhatsApp to that number. They could even use the, 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 the technology and pin their home location so that the members of staff or drivers and collectors can go straight to their homes. On March 30th, we had already put in place a skeletal staff. And by skeletal staff, I, may, I mean that for our main office, our staff was cut in two. And so we had to ensure that the proper social distancing was done, while at the same time, persons had the opportunity to carry out their, their, their work responsibilities. Last week, or sorry, the, this week Monday, or last week Monday, the Solid Waste General Office um, had what we call a soft opening as we move back to our responsibilities. And so persons can now come to our offices and can be and, and are able to transact their businesses. Going forward then, the Solid Waste Management Corporation will continue to adhere to all the instructions relative to the COVID-19. There has been an increase in the waste generated. As a result of that, we are asking householders to be responsible as they put out their waste for collection. Please, double wrap all your bags that may contain COVID-19 safety activities. What I mean by that, the paper that is used to wash, to, to dry your hands, et cetera, et cetera, the sanitization, empty sanitization um, bottles, please double wrap these items as you put them out. And there are some who have the, the tendency of um, just resting plastic bags at the side of the road. Can I encourage you not to do that? It put additional stress and risk on the workers who are already doing a difficult job. Prior to the 24-hour curfew, we, got, we began the process of engaging our medical offices, 
labs, etc., around St. Kitts. This is necessary if we are to conduct or have in place uh, to allow for waste traceability. By that, if there is something that happens and someone becomes sick as a result of the waste that was put out, we would have the opportunity to trace where that waste came from. That engagement will continue during this co the course of this week, and we look forward to the support of all the medical offices, etc., who are involved. So on behalf of the Solid Waste Management Corporation, I take the opportunity to thank you very much for having us here today and for us to present what we think has been a very um, thought-out approach in something that is relatively new to us. Thank you very much, and have yourself a great day. Thank you very much, Mr. Philip. I now invite Dr. Sherilyn Ward Crawford of the Mental Health and Psycho Support Committee within the Ministry of Health to address us. Dr. Crawford. A pleasant good afternoon to all. The COVID-19 pandemic is taking not just a physical toll on people, but also affecting mental health. We would like you to know that the mental health team continues to provide mental health and psychosocial support to the Federation. We have embarked on a campaign to disseminate information about how to take care of our mental health during these times. We are disseminating short articles that speak to the different presentations or responses that people could have because of this pandemic. Some of the articles shared so far include supporting vulnerable populations during COVID-19 by Dr. Sharice Godwin, parenting during COVID-19 by Ms. Tricia Daniel, managing anxiety by Dr. Desir Piera, reducing stigma by Mr. Davin Francis, and managing stress by Ms. Michelle de la Coudre Blake. We are asking members of the public to read these short articles, enhance their awareness of the varying responses to this pandemic, and gain insight about coping. This is positive, accurate, and sheer worthy information. All of these articles and more can be found on the Sankey's Mental Health Association Facebook page. Please visit this page daily for tips about how to boost your mental health and how to cope with stress and anxiety associated with the COVID-19 experience. Other initiatives so far include, we have prepared some public service announcements about mental health and coping and they are in rotation currently on ZIZ. In collaboration with PAHO, we have conducted a virtual psychosocial support seminar for hotline workers, teachers, faith-based leaders, and community leaders. We have made virtual presentations to the Rotary Club and at the Antioch Baptist Church. During my last briefing, I stated that the mental health team was ready and willing to offer mental health and psychosocial support. And since then, people have been reaching out to us. To date, we have had 121 contacts for social support. We have just completed some social media cards for coping strategies with the assistance of PAHO. And we will have these, to, we will start to disseminate these from tomorrow. We would like to remind persons that it is normal to feel sad, stressed, confused, scared, or angry during this pandemic. Talking to people you trust can help. Please know 
that the mental health team continues to provide mental health and psychosocial support. The numbers to call are, for St. Kitts, we have the St. Kitts Red Cross, and you could call from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. to 661-2852. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., 661-2603. From 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., 664-2014. For the counseling center, you can call 662-8086. For the Janet Hospital Psychological Services, you can call 662-8551. For Nevis, we have the Nevis Red Cross. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., you can call 663-7879. From 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., you can call 664-4119. From 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., you can call 665-4583. The Nevis Mental Health Unit would like to inform their clients that even though their mental health clinic day has been coinciding with the Wednesdays, 24 hours lockdown days, they continue to provide care. Persons are asked to call 669-960-9400 to make arrangements so that they can receive care. If you miss any of these numbers mentioned, please check the St. Kitts Mental Health Association Facebook page. We will continue to keep that flyer in rotation. I conclude with a few tips for coping with stress. If you must stay at home, maintain a healthy lifestyle, including proper diet, sleep, exercise and social contacts with loved ones at home and by email and phone with other family and friends. Don't use alcohol or drugs to deal with your emotions. If you feel overwhelmed, call the numbers for psychosocial support. Get the facts that would help you to accurately determine your risk so that you can take reasonable precautions from credible sources such as the NIAC. Limit your worry and agitation by lessening the time you and your family spend watching or listening to media coverage that you might perceive as upsetting. And draw on skills you have used in the past that have helped you to manage previous life adversities and use those skills to help you manage your emotions during this challenging time. And remember, if you need help, the mental health team continues to provide support. At this time, I would like to publicly thank the members of the Mental Health and Psychosocial Support Committee for their support in crafting the mental health response to COVID-19. These persons are Ms. Michelle de la Coudre Blake, Vice Chairperson and also Director of the Counseling Services within the Ministry of Social Services. Ms. Zara Jacobs, Secretary and also the Vice President of the St. Kitts Mental Health Association. <coughs> Ms. Orika Lennon Petty, PRO representing NEMA. Dr. Tanya Sanchez Fajardo, Psychiatrist representing Community and Institution Based Psychiatric Services. Ms. Sharon Warner, representing the Department of Gender Affairs. Ms. Curtis Clark, representing the Red Cross. And Ms. Joya Walters and Ms. Delicia Julius, representing the Nevis Mental Health Unit. I am grateful for your expertise, passion, team spirit, and commitment to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis during this pandemic. I say thank you very much to my team and we will continue to be here during and after this pandemic. Thank you, Dr. Crawford, for sharing with us on mental health and psychosocial support. I now invite Dr. 
Superintendent Cromwell Henry, Divisional Commander for District A, to give us his report. Superintendent Henry. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Let me take this opportunity to wish you a very pleasant and happy birthday today. And may you live to see many more. Today, I'm happy to please that there were no arrests over the last 24 hours for curfew violators. So the total number of arrests remain at 93 to date. I'm also pleased to inform that the police have formally arrested and charged Dania Phipps of Sadlers for the murder of 22-year-old Clement Mills of Parsons. Mills was fatally shot at his home at Parsons Village at about 9 p.m. on April 22nd. The police wish to thank those who assisted in any way in this investigation and continue to solicit your support in police operations. Tomorrow is the first of four limited operation days this week. Limited operation days runs from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. As I mentioned before, there are some persons who tend to leave their homes before 6 a.m. to form lines at business places in Bastyr. Please note that you run the risk of being turned back or even detained by law enforcement if you are found in public before 6 a.m. The curfew runs from 7 p.m. until 6 a.m. 7.01 p.m. until 6 a.m. For businesses, I want to remind you that where it is not possible for a business to function in accordance with the provisions of Regulation 7, and Regulation 7 speaks to social distancing and physical distancing, that business shall cease to operate for the duration of these regulations. And these reg this particular Regulation 15 expires on May 9th. Exceptions have been made for barbers and hair salons, and the CMO has set out guidelines, some guidelines for their operation. Both the barber or hair stylist and the client must wear masks. Only one person is permitted in the salon or barber shop at a time. Therefore, you must work by appointments. The hair stylist must wear gloves, or barber, for, as the case may be, must wear gloves. The equipment and the seating and other areas in the saloon where that is frequently touched must be sanitized before and after each client. So once you comply by these guidelines, barbers and hair stylists and hair salons can operate on limited operation days. Regulation 16.4, during a limited operation day, a business or enterprise that is able to operate may do so provided that the owner or operator of the business or enterprise shall adhere to social distancing and physical distancing protocols pursuant to Regulation 7. So there is much emphasis placed in the regulation on social, distance, social distancing and physical distancing, also hand hygiene and masks. We want to encourage persons, both businesses and members of the public, to adhere to these protocols. They are for your own good, and they are intended to prevent the spread of the disease. I want to wish you all a very pleasant rest of the evening, curfew, and Blessed day tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Superintendent Henry. I now invite Dr. Marissa Carty 
Public Relations Officer for the Health Emergency Operations Center to give us the COVID-19 situation report. Dr. Carty. Thank you, Mr. Williams, and a pleasant good evening. As of Sunday, 26th April, the World Health Organization reports 2,804,796 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with 193,722 deaths. In the Federation, 292 persons have been tested, with 15 confirmed positive, 247 confirmed negative, with 30 results pending. There are now four confirmed cases who have recovered with zero deaths. There is currently one person quarantined in a government facility, while 85 persons are quarantined at home. 11 persons remain in isolation, while 661 persons have been released from quarantine. I take this opportunity to remind us of the local manifestation of symptoms of COVID-19. They are fever, sore throat, dry cough or a new continuous cough, runny nose, headache. Other symptoms include fatigue or a general feeling of weakness, diarrhea, temporary loss of taste and smell, and difficulty breathing. It is important to note that if you are breathless or are unable to speak a few words, this is a medical emergency and you are urged to call 911 and must be taken to the hospital immediately. If you are experiencing any of the other symptoms mentioned above, you need to stay at home. Do not go to work and we recommend that you call your regular healthcare provider 311 for ad or 311 sorry for advice on what to do remember your actions count therefore consider the following proper hand hygiene avoid close contact stay at home if you are sick and clean objects and surfaces regularly. Maintaining the overall health of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis continues to be our individual and collective responsibility. National statistics and other COVID-19 related information can be found at the official website, www.covid19.gov.kn at the St. Kitts Health Promotion Unit Facebook page, YouTube channel, and also Instagram platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Carty, for that report. I now invite Mr. Abdia Samuel, Chair of the COVID-19 National Task Force, to address us. Mr. Samuel. Good afternoon all. Thank you for joining us this good Sunday afternoon, 26th of April, 2020. Uh, yeah, we continue with the wonderful celebrations. Uh, today is the man of the hour's birthday, Mr. Leswai Williams. So I ask you to join me in wishing him happy birthday. So happy birthday to you, Mr. Williams. And thank you for the national sacrifice that you are making on your birthday. So first he was the CMO, then we had the medical chief of staff, and then we had Henry yesterday, and now you. Anybody else? So we can at least let the general public know. So April has been a good month for us. 311, your update for telephone calls for the past 24 hours. 311, a total of 26 calls. There were 26 calls on St. Kitts and zero on Nevis. The St. Kitts emergency calls, 911, 
there were a total of 66 calls. EMS would have processed three calls, police 50, fire and rescue services two calls. So a total of a total of 121 emergency calls would have been processed for the period of the last 24 hours. The NEOC, separate and apart, would have uh, processed a total of 16 calls, five health-related, eight persons seeking permission to move during the curfew hours, one seeking one persons seeking general information one utility related, and one for general assistance. The EOC on Nevis would have processed a total of 15 calls, which are 15 calls with persons uh, seeking assistance to move during the curfew hours and also law enforcement related. Earlier today, persons would have heard in the East Bastia area and, and by extension, probably in the central Bastia area, would have heard a loud horn. I received some information from the general manager of Seoul, Mr. Avery Muscal, and he stated, the vessel, the vessel completed a routine discharge of fuel supplied by PVD for Skelet, which passes through Seoul's terminal en route to Skelet. After completing the discharge, the ship's horn malfunctioned, which sounded and alerted residents in the area. The ship's captain has confirmed the malfunction has been rectified and the source of disturbance has been eliminated. Sorry for the inconvenience this has caused. Again, I want to assure the general public it was not a horn for any tsunami or otherwise. I am informed that a lot of the phone calls that was received at the EO, NEOC and 911 would have been persons seeking information as to what is happening. So let us keep on praying that we don't have to face any more challenges that we are facing right now. The COVID-19 Compliant Task Force will continue with its evaluation tomorrow, 27th April. So they got to rest on Saturday and Sunday and this upcoming week for all businesses and enterprises, they will be evaluating, they will continue with the educational process in preparation for enforcement in the next following week. So again, I'm asking all business places and enterprises to conform themselves with the regulations. If you're having any challenges, feel free to call the NEOC and seek to speak with Sergeant Sophia Henry or speak with the head of that task force, Ms. Marceline Hughes. I'm encouraging all, or you can call myself. Please do your best to conform with the law. The quarantine task force, I was informed that they would have carried out some activities yesterday. Persons in quarantine and isolation we ask you to comply with these protocols. I want to thank Auntie May of Canary for again providing us with nutritious local, ju local juices for the NEOC. I had a nice glass of your guava drink, one of my favorites, and I can tell you I went for seconds and seconds and seconds. So thank you again. And finally, I want to remind persons that the 311 hotlines are for health related matters. We are working to address getting you another toll free number that will be related to any other general matters. Please support us in using 311 for all health related matters. I also want to com commend the members of cabinet in particular, the Honorable Prime Minister, the Attorney General, and the Minister of, with responsibility for, the ministry, for education, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, for the assiduous and continuous work that they are doing in attempting to expedite the process of repatriating our students um, soonest. Um, it's very welcoming. 
and it's moving along positively and I look forward uh, to having some uh, deliverables very soon. So to all of our students who are overseas, you, uh, you too are in our prayers, you too are in our preparedness and response measures. Again, I want to wish Mr. Lesroy Williams a hearty happy birthday and I want him to enjoy his day tremendously. Thank you everyone and we look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Samuel, for your birthday wishes and also to Superintendent Henry. Thank you very much. It is a blessing, really, to, to be alive and to celebrate birthday, although we are celebrating it under very abnormal circumstances, not normal for me to celebrate a birthday like this. But anyway, I thank God for another year of life and for blessing me with health and strength to be able to serve my country. The, we have arrived at the question and answer segment where we can have some interaction with the public. The first question comes from SKN Newsline. Is the government aware of St. Kitts and Nevis students in Jamaica or any Caribbean country who are stranded and want to return home at this time? If there are such students, what actions the government has taken to assist such students. Thank you for that question. That question, sorry. Uh, the government is presently organizing uh, and planning as to the best appropriate means in addressing this situation. I know for sure that uh, the missions have been tasked with receiving information. Also persons have been, students in particular and their parents, have been uh, encouraged to contact the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Education, and the Office of the Chief Personal Officer uh, under, the under the Office of the Prime Minister to register their concerns, and I'm certain soon and very soon we will see the government reveal a plan to address those students in particular who are overseas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Samuel for your response. This question is for Dr. Wilkinson. I just heard the situation report for the Federation. Are you happy with the results or disheartened by the slow rate of recovery of our patients? I am confused, but some of the things I hear after the reports are given and I need clarification. Dr. Wilkinson. Uh, thank you, Les Roy. And I can understand how somebody can be confused in this era of infodemic where there's so much information around there and sometimes you have difficulty to determine what is credible information or not. But to answer the question, I think it's important for me to compare just briefly what is happening around the world. In Spain today, there was celebration that after six weeks, children were allowed out for one hour to uh, play. And they also celebrated the fact that for the first time they had a drop in their death rate for 24 hours 
down to 260 persons per 24 hours from a high of about 900 or 1,000. In the United States, we have over 54,000 deaths, and New York celebrated the fact that the death rate was down to 367 persons per 24 hours, down from a high of about 1,000 persons per day. Here in St. Kitts, over that same six-week period, we identified 15 cases. These 15 cases were isolated. All of their contacts were identified and quarantined, and they were tested, and to date, all of them are negative. Of the 15 cases, they are all doing well. To date, we have zero deaths. We have zero hospitalization. And you just heard that we had two more persons added to the list of completely recovered, which means that more than 25% of our persons have recovered. And so, the question is, am I happy? Yes, I should be, and you should be too. Thank you, Dr. Wilkinson. This question has to do with landlords and their tenants. The question is, if tenants who pay over 1,000 plus for rent and who are receiving the stimulus package should we give the full thousand to the landlord because you think it's just a start of paying their rent and not thinking about others in supplying food for themselves and their families? It's alleged, it's been said, tenants should pay half the rent dur dur during until this pandemic is over. Because the landlord is asking for half the 1500, <laughs> but you're telling me I'll be backed up on a balance of another 750, it's very unfair because that's my last $750 that I'm giving to the landlord. While we're here to provide answers as it relates to COVID-19, we can't provide answers for every situation. But what we're asking persons to do is to express consideration and leniency during this period. And I believe that everybody has to look at their own unique situation and determine how they can survive until we get back to normal. Dr. Wilkinson, this question is for you again. We do understand that there are no major operations during this time for the COVID-19. But I have a friend who has been bleeding for over two weeks, going on three, in a lot of pain, and gets weak from time to time. And according to the report, she has to have an operation. Seeing that there is nothing severe, why can't some operations be dealt with, especially those that are very severe? Dr. Wilkinson. I just want to say that at the start of this pandemic, when it reached uh, St. Kitts, we said that we were putting a hold on elective operations. We never said, however, that we are stopping persons from coming to the hospital. And so I'm telling everyone out there, if you have a medical issue, you would need to come to see your doctor and your doctor will determine whether or not this is an emergency or not. It's not for you to stay home and determine that this is elective or this is an emergency. And so if there's somebody who is bleeding, I ask them to come to the hospital right now and they will be assessed and the determination will be made as to whether or not something needs to be done urgently or not. 
Okay, so please don't stay home and make those decisions yourself. We will make the decision as to whether or not an operation is deemed emergent or elective, not for you to stay home and make that decision yourself. So please come to the institution if you have a problem. Thank you, Dr. Wilkinson. These questions are from Sugar City, FM 90.3. Why are companies telling their staff to go on vacation instead of asking them? Why are companies counting the lockdown days in their staff vacation which is wrong. Those two questions. Yes. All right, good afternoon, and thank you for those questions. Again, as has been encouraged before, if persons are, are experiencing these challenges, we advise them to contact the Labor Department so that the Labor Department can investigate these matters and have these matters addressed. And uh, they, these matters will be taken to the highest authority for action. Thank you. This question has to do with NHC. Has NHC put something in place where online payments can be made? A number of companies at the industrial estate have not given employees letters. These letters are necessary for persons to activate the exemptions as they relate to loans, etc. Employees, employers have been trying to track down managers who have been saying they cannot do anything at this moment. What can employees do to get these letters that are very much needed? Again, thanks for the question. These questions are related to labor matters. And again, I will, we, are going to, we are encouraging persons who are uh, experiencing these challenges as it regards to the labor force to kindly contact the labor department for actions on these matters. Thank you. If we go to at least six months into the lockdown, Will the government provide more days of limited or restricted days of ferry travel? Who is going to take that? Dr. Wilkinson. I think based on the clinical situation on the ground, we have provided a two-week uh, period where you know that, for example, for the week coming up, we have four days of normal activity, and the following week, we have another four days. And at the end of that two-week period, we'll assess the situation, and we will let you know whether or not we'll have further easing of the restrictions. Thank you. Someone is asking if they can go walking on the golf course alone without anyone else because they need to keep their mental and physical health. And I can tell you, during uh, this period of curfew, despite the fact that I have a pass to come out to come to meetings like these and to go to the hospital, outside of that, I try to exercise at home. I 
try to skip right down my veranda. And so until we ease the restrictions, I say that you exercise where you are. I think that brings us to the end of our questions for today. I want to thank you very much for your questions. Tomorrow we'll be back for another briefing at 5 p.m. I would like to thank all those who answered the questions, Dr. Cameron Wilkinson, our Medical Chief of Staff, Mr. Abdia Samuel, Chair of the COVID-19 National Task Force. I also would like to thank all of our presenters for today. Mr. Keith Lee Phillip, who is the General Manager of the Solid Waste Management Corporation. Dr. Marisa Carty, PRO for the Health Emergency Operations Center. Superintendent Cromwell Henry, Divisional Commander for District A and Dr. Sherilyn Ward Crawford for her sharing on mental health and psychosocial support. I also want to thank Mrs. Christmas Jacobs for continuing to provide her services of sign language for us, very much important. And all of you, Minister of State Wendy Phipps, of course, responsible for health, Thank you for your support and for being here. For all of you who tuned into today's briefing, thank you very much. And tomorrow we'll see you again. Until then, be safe. The coronavirus pandemic has caused upheaval in the lives of many people and the increased stress that it has caused is a very normal response. High levels of stress impacts people's physical health, how they feel and how they think. To help manage stress during this pandemic, it is important to stay up to date with credible sources of information about how to keep yourself and your family safe, maintain connections with family and friends while remembering to observe social and physical distancing, practice relaxation techniques like deep breathing, yoga, meditation, stretching, and relaxing visual imagery, focus on positive aspects of your life and any new opportunities that this situation is bringing to you. Engage in physical activity, even in your home. This helps to boost mood and reduce levels of stress. Stress levels can be managed by having a problem-solving approach, by managing the things that you can manage, and by adopting a positive attitude about your capabilities. This message is brought to you by the St. Kitts Mental Health Association. Extreme sadness and feelings of despair could be some of the things people are noticing in themselves during this unusual time. Pay specific attention to see if you have feelings of discouragement, hopelessness, irritability, difficulty concentrating, and disruptions in eating and sleeping habits. Pay attention to your emotions and talk to someone if they are feeling overwhelming. Focus on positive messages that you get from your environment. Listen to uplifting music, stories, or news items. Distract your thoughts by doing something like reading a book, doing a puzzle, coloring, or playing a game. Humor helps to lift moods. Watch a comedy or have a good laugh with friends. Remember your own strengths. What are some positive things that have helped you feel better in the past? Remember, if you have tried everything and overwhelming feelings of sadness still persist, reach out for professional help. This message comes to you from the St. Kitts Mental Health Association. Before touching the mask, clean hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Take the mask and inspect it for tears or holes. Orient which side is the top side where the metal strip is. Ensure the proper side of the mask faces outwards, the colored side. Place the mask to your face. Pinch the metal strip or stiff edge of the mask so it molds to the shape of your nose. Pull down the mask's bottom so it covers your mouth and your chin. After use, take off the mask. 
Remove the elastic loops from behind the ears while keeping the mask away from your face and clothes to avoid touching potentially contaminated surfaces of the mask. Discard the mask in a closed bin immediately after use. It's time.